thank you for tuning in to the Happy Hearts Podcast with your host, Becca. Rate and subscribe as we power you to live with love. Hello and welcome everybody to the Happy Hearts podcast, powering you to live with love. Uh, Today's um, episode, we're going to be discussing how helping ourselves is helping others. And we've got um, a very special guest today. Uh, We have Mason, who's also known as Cosmic Landings on all social networking platforms. Um, hi, welcome, Mason. Hello, thank you for the welcome. It feels so good to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on today. Um, would you like to um just give us a little, you know, thing introduction into who you are, what you do, and all about Mason? <laughs> sure. So my name is Mason. I began my awakening journey, I like to start off by talking about guided meditations and astral projection hypnosis videos on YouTube. I started learning about dream recall and lucid dreaming through these videos just as a younger teen. And after graduating high school, I went to an art and design university. I realized pretty soon after that that wasn't going to be the best fit for my growth. And I ended up spending endless nights online just watching people farming off-grid and building natural homes if anyone knows Joel Salatin I got very familiar with his work and I kind of had like my own calling to go back to the land so I found a volunteer organization and I went out to California and I volunteered on a few organic farms learning more about the food and sustainable living I've had all sorts of jobs since then from delivering food, pizza making, being a farmhand, and most recently, I was a float ambassador at a float therapy spa. Um, Now, I'm currently shifting my focus to producing conscious media online. I kind of have this dream of being this meditation coach, and I'm just starting from the ground up, and that's what I've been up to lately. Hey, it sounds like an amazing journey and I for one can say you would make um an exceptional exceptional meditation coach because I have actually attended when you have been taking meditations in the team podcasts and um they're like the best ones. <laughs> Thank I you think so much. you have such a soothing calming uh sense about you and um you're very wise also I think like an old soul I'd like to say and that is definitely a compliment I'm just saying (laughs) Um, thank you thank you so much I definitely feel that like in my heart this is not the my first run around the block here yeah definitely definitely Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah that's it's so cool that you've done so much of your journey around um food and and how you know it it can it's beneficial to us obviously it's a life source um but um yeah I'd like if it's okay with you I normally do like a little heart connection breath thing but um I think that you should take that away I would I would love to take over I can lead us into a short meditation right now if you're ready for me to begin yeah ready when you are thank you all right thank you very much for the opportunity all right everyone If you want to just simply get cozy wherever you are, finding a place to get comfortable, whether this is sitting in a chair, laying on your bed, 
or on the floor, find a spot that you feel called to. When you find the spot, begin by gently closing your eyes. After closing your eyes, feel into the connection that your body shares with the surface you are sitting on. Feel into the support that this surface provides. Whether it's the chair that holds your body up or the bed that supports your relaxed body. Feel into the texture. Feel into the firmness or softness. And start by bringing some awareness to your breath. Taking a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale out of your mouth. Breathing in through your nose. And breathing out of your mouth. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, let all tension go from your body. Breathing in, breathing out, allowing your body to fill with warmth, positive, healing energy. Taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out feeling your body relax further and further. Now, if you feel called, you may gently bring your hands to your chest and place them over your heart. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. You may feel your heart beat, whether it's beating slow or fast, allow it as it is and allow yourself to connect with your heart space. Each deep breath you take in brings you closer to your heart and each exhale you can feel that positive healing energy that is inside of your heart expand. Breathing in, connecting even further, breathing out, allowing this to expand. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, allow this sensation to spread from your heart all the way to your toes, all the way to your fingers, all the way through your head, and even into your hair. Taking a moment here to just feel the presence. I will now call you to gently Bring awareness back to your physical body. Begin by feeling into your toes, into your fingers, and give them a wiggle, allowing your breath to return to its natural pattern. Your hands may still be on your chest. Leave them there if you feel called, or you may relax them now. Taking another deep breath in, bringing awareness to your full body, feeling your legs, your waist, your torso, your neck, and your head. And when you feel ready, gently bat your eyes back open and bring your attention back to the environment. Thank you all.
Oh, as always, I said, absolutely amazing. Uh, one of my favorite things about meditation is actually connecting to the heart center at the feeling. I just, I love it. You know, it makes me just instantly feel happy all the time. <laughs> so I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It actually leads very well into the first uh, point that I wanted to talk about um, and how our journey connects us to um, to be able to love ourselves, self-love, um, and where that begins. Um, how, uh, well, for me, um, one of the things that I struggled with before coming on the spiritual journey was being able to love myself and who I was. Um, I had a a very big disconnect uh, to that heart space, which is probably why I'm so in love with it now. Uh, um, And so I just wanted to see, like, what is your um, opinion on how developing ourselves through this journey puts us back into that heart space and enables us to love ourselves again what's your opinion on that i definitely resonate with what you say coming into this spiritual awakening i had no clue of how much or how far away i was truly from self-love it's it's really deep when you go down into it And we don't always realize on the surface how we're treating ourselves. We have somewhere around 80,000 thoughts a day. And it's usually until you have like a spiritual emergency or some kind of awakening that you truly look at this and you consider, well, how am I, how am I treating myself? Do do I have self doubt? Mm. Am, am I not chasing my my dreams? Am I not following my passions? Mm-hmm. Like, if you aren't honoring certain parts of yourself, I don't know how. Like, it's hard. Like, it's not always super quick. It's not just turning on a light switch and realizing. Mm-hmm. Self love is like a journey and you have to go in to your own heart and see what you're not facing if you have traumas if you have events that you you are still holding on to even this if it's as simple as like a piece of clothing you used to wear in Mm. the past like i've had to get rid of a lot of things in order to truly like move out of that phase and Mm -hmm. come into a space of self-love and when you're coming from a really low place of energy or self-love it it makes it hard to help others and sometimes we try so hard to fix others or show others how we think they should be when truly we can put that focus on ourself yeah and we can become like this ideal reflection of love Mm. and (laughs) it's so funny that you say that because um a part of the problem that I had before realizing that I needed to fill my own cup before I could fill other people's is that I gave and gave and gave and I never expected anything back um and it's not even so much that I expect anything back now from other people, but I wasn't giving it to myself. Um, and that's, uh, it was breaking me down because I was expecting outward sources to be able to fill my cup back up. And it wasn't until I realized that actually, no, um, that is never going to satisfy uh, the need of love in me. Um, because I needed to be that that source of love first 
before receiving anything else. Um, and when I came, it was actually when I came to that realization that um, I woke up and I realized like that that's the answer. And even now I'm laughing and I'm smiling. And I'm feeling so warm inside because I'm remembering how it felt to because uh, it was actually in um, a therapy appointment that it happened. Um, I was well obviously facing the things and coming to the realization while I was in the room but it was because I connected on a soul level with the therapist um, and that made me come to that realization and I walked out of the doctors and I was like wow why does everything look so bright like everything just looked so much more colorful and I could hear the birds singing and I was like almost to tears I rang my sister and she thought I'd lost the part <laughs> because I was just like it all makes sense how, how did I not see it before um and it's not like I don't um have dark days now and I don't have days where I need to face my shadow I just um see I accept the shadows now yeah I I'm I'm not afraid to deal with that darkness I may I've made in some sense of um uh I've made friends with it um to the point where I can say okay yes I am light I am love and I'm caring and I'm nurturing but I am also all these other dark things all these negative things they make up half of what I am and if I don't give them the love and attention then I'm not fully taking care of myself and that I think is a big important piece of being able to help others because if you're not fully able to love yourself then you're not in a place where you can care for other people Uh, and you're not coming from you can't possibly come from a place of care you're coming from a place of hurt and pain and because you can feel that hurt and pain in other people you want to try and heal that um but you first you can't really heal that with someone else unless they do the work themselves and you got to be doing the work yourself Uh, and it took so such a long time for me to come to that um realization um but yeah Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I, I totally, totally resonate with with what you're saying. It's amazing how it kind of feels when you are having those realizations. It's like you're like this little kid, like covered in dirt or something. Like you're really yeah. going, from, like, going out and playing, and you like finally get to like shower it all off, <laughs> and you just like feel like this new, clean, fresh being after you've faced those like hard truths about yourself Mm -hmm. and then it allows you to go back out into the world and to be that shining light and like like you were saying like listen to the birds chirp and see the brightness yeah and just like appreciate things from a different perspective I think Uh, because you learn to have gratitude for every moment um, and everything just seems so magical um every interaction seems magical and and now everything seems to be connected and every relationship that I make has a meaning and a purpose and and it it's like meant to be like nothing's left to coincidence which I I am fully enjoying and fully embracing um but I do think that um being able to love yourself on that deeper level and look within, um, it does increase your ability to support other people because instead of wanting to take all their energy and all their pain away, you're wanting to uplift them instead, and that's a totally different, um, a totally different way of helping. I I suppose that when you're taking the pain away or you think that you are 
um you're actually hindering that person because you're creating codependency rather than encouraging them to step on their own two feet i i totally agree that's why like the healing aspect of going in and facing the shadow like going Mm -hmm. deep into the unhealed traumas it's to me it's integral kind of how we were talking about loving yourself first like it's like you have to fill up your own cup first Mm -hmm. otherwise you're gonna be like using the little drips that you have to try to help others and it's not gonna go as far as if you have this overflowing glass Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what's going to be able to help people and how how you get there it's it's not a straight path for everyone like everyone's unique but I do believe that there are like modalities whether it's mindfulness or guided shadow work it's Mm -hmm. there are things out there to help the being the human being like transform out of the old self and into the new self they're creating when when healing like you can feel you can feel really low and it reminds me of this analogy that a youtuber that i actually felt really drawn to at the start of my awakening if anyone is curious his name is victor odo he uses this analogy it's i'm pretty sure i've heard him use a slingshot and a trampoline but the idea is to look at like the stretching Mm -hmm. of the slingshot or the trampoline and you have to look at like the tension building in the slingshot as it comes back look at that like those are the hard things that you're facing those those are the traumas those are the like negative environment you may find yourself in all those things are stretching you and like things something as simple as like stubbing your toe can like stretch you even further Mm -hmm. or forgetting to unmute a microphone when you're trying to record something or car repairs like the list goes on and on but if you can overcome the mentality that telling yourself like oh like i'm suffering i'm 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 no good like if you can overcome that victim mentality Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that's what opens up the opportunity for you to heal through these obstacles and the stretch and rather than silencing your emotions you go in and you feel those and then all of a sudden all that tension that you build up like the slingshot releases and (laughs) all of these instances you faced where like they're now behind you and they're just making you go even quicker into this new awareness this like awareness of the heart space that you've been cultivating just with a little bit of dirt over you like you're always <laughs> cultivating but now you've like cleaned it off and you can go back out into the real world and choose how you want to spread this yeah even think like talking about it now like it's getting me really excited inside <laughs> um I was um like I really like that slingshot analogy because I really th- feel like that's what's happening right now like I'm being <laughs> I'm going that fast you know like um a rock wood from a, a slingshot and with full force as well but at the same time, I feel like a newborn trying to learn to walk again. Um, and I'm just like discovering new things all the time. Um, and I think that a lot of people will uh, be able to, you know, f- understand how that feels, especially so early on, on in um, the journey, because um, like all this, even though I have, always had a touch of spirituality in me um I did get lost along the way like a lot of people do um I, I was lost in in the darkness thinking that it was a negative thing um but now I, I don't even feel like negative things are negative things <laughs> so it's crazy to think about but um yeah I really, I really like that analogy. And um, I think it, it comes back tenfold as well. Like the, the, 
the way we love and treat ourselves um, and the outlook that we have on our outward world as well as our inner world, um, it, it brings back all the love and care that we thought that we didn't have. It, um, it comes back to us, to us, but I think it starts with recognising the tiny things and then because you're recognizing and you're showing gratitude for the tiny in, in what we would say is insignificant things, it, um, it, when the big things come, you really notice. Um, so, I mean, that's how I feel um, having self-love benefits um, us and the people around us. But um, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Is is self love like a big thing when it comes to the people that are surrounding you and that you're trying to work with or um, are in your community? I I think the self love is really the core of it. It's it's my current understanding that. Like as we are allowing ourselves to flow from that heart space, like if we're interaction to interaction, we're flowing from that heart space. As we do that, we're healing our hearts. And as we're healing our hearts, since we're healing the inside, we're the outside's just a reflection of the inside. Mm -hmm. So if we are facing our deep traumas, shadow self, however you want to put it, we're eventually going to uncover it and we're going to feel greater than we've ever felt. And that's not to say that it's just like an up and a down. Like I believe that like you're going to get stretched and released so many times. So many times. Like yeah. we've probably, we've probably stretched and released a few times just in the matter of the last hour. Yeah, so, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it makes you realize the intensity of, the reality of it because if this love that we're cultivating on the inside of us truly does reflect to the outside it's it's my guess that this awareness of the heart will it's going to spread like wildfire and it's it's just going to keep going and at this time on earth there's so many souls awakening and so many people beginning to question reality themselves mm -hmm. and if we can provide a space for these souls that are beginning that journey to connect back to their hearts we're we're giving them something that they're eventually going to be able to give back out to other it's like using healing words mm -hmm. using simple like you could just simply hold the door for someone when you're out in public or writing a nice letter, preparing a yummy meal for you and your partner. Like just off of the top of my head, all those little acts are those little things that are eventually going to go out into the collective. And their chances are, I, I believe, like what you believe, that it's going to come back tenfold. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, that's the way of bringing people back to their hearts. Yeah, it's so exciting. And then hearing you say it, it's like even more exciting. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the way that you explain things, but you make it sound so like whimsical and fun and magical. Oh, um, it's, it's so magical. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, and I'm so excited, like, as as because I'm a mom as well, um, bringing my kids up and them being introduced into this community um they've just they've grown so much in just such a short amount of time um I mean in some ways they definitely <laughs> need to be working on their shadows but <laughs> oh, <we all. laughs> yeah but they're they're just um you know they're learning that asking questions is good um and it's expanding everything about them the way they want to experience the world um they want to 
that they're having dreams now that they didn't have before. Um, They're communicating better than they used to. They use expressive language and um, that they didn't have the capability of doing before. And it's, this has all happened in like six months, six months of being within the community. So um, can you imagine if there was a whole like platform just for children to bring them into this world um, and bring them back into their hearts? It just, it, 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 you know, it lights a fire inside me just to think about it. And, and I'm hoping that Happy Heart House will be that platform. Um, and then having this community as well, like you, Mason, and the other people that um, are around us, um, and being able to bring you guys into Happy Hearts House to to be that influence on these kids, it is so exciting. Um, I, I, and then, you know, the effect that it's going to have on them as they grow up and make it easier for them to travel this journey of life I can't I don't even have words <laughs> it's it's hard to put words to it I I immediately I remember the first it was a live a live stream that I tuned in of yours and that was the first I intimate connection that I had had with you and under like understanding the energy behind yeah. what you were going to be creating I was I was hooked. I was <laughs> I was like, uh, DMing you right away. Like how how can I get involved? Because I'm I'm right there with you in, in agreeance of I think that's the way because we have to focus on the kids because the kids are going to be our future leaders. Mm-hmm. So rather than trying to change everyone around us, if we could just create the environment that we would have wanted that we see to create like the most heart-centered souls I think that's so special and I'm happy to be a part of what you're creating oh it's so exciting um so like one of the things that I was wanting to try and um discuss in because it's something that we don't see children doing these days is random acts of kindness. Um, so being able to do things just because for other people, like they always have to be getting something out of it, like some gratification or some material re- reward. It doesn't seem um, like they have to that they can just do things out of the kindness of the heart. And I was wondering um, what your thoughts would be on that. How do you think that kids could connect back to that feeling of just doing things because they can and because it has a positive effect on the world outside of themselves? I believe just as we were talking on the outer reflection of the inner, I believe that if one, let's say one kid starts doing this, it is my belief that eventually it's going to spread. And if other kids come into this community and they see a group of five kids now just making music, drawing a cute little picture and tagging one of the other kids in the community and saying like hey I made this for you do do you need me to send you a print like just Mm -hmm. something so simple like that other kids are going to feel the energy behind that and I think that they're going to want to take part in it so I think it's going to grow very organically I I don't know if there's like a surefire method of just making it happen but I do know that each little act, like the universe is going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not going to just be like the universe seeing someone pick up a piece of trash. It's going to be the universe like watching this expansive bridge being built and 
it's gonna go like interconnect all these kids and from different places around the world and i think the universal energy is going to back it i I don't think that there's anything that could stop something like that from spreading. So mm. it's all just going to start organically is my belief. Yeah, I think it's um, exactly right what you said about just having that platform available for them to be able to uh, to be able to ex- be, feel comfortable enough to do these kind of um acts out of the kindness of the heart and just express themselves freely and openly without judgment um I think that it starts with environment and and for that environment to be secure and safe I couldn't get that word out then (laughs) um but yeah I think as long as the parents are doing their job of being able to give them access to these platforms, then we're already one step in the right direction, you know. Um, and I know as a, as a parent myself that it's hard to do things alone. Um, and you could have a sea of people around you and you could still feel like you're doing it alone because people don't take the time to actually truly understand how difficult it can be sometimes, it, even though it is re- rewarding. Um, it's so hard to because you just want to do what's best all the time and even sometimes in doing what you think is best, um sometimes good things don't happen um in those moments and they're the tough moments they're the times when parents need community and they need somebody who's going to understand and be able to relate to that um for an example like um I've mentioned before that ever ever going through trauma uh and that was linked to to me uh doing what I thought was best for her she ended up being uh, having trauma and and that broke me um it it was actually one of the things that led to um my dark nights (laughs) basically um before this this journey that I'm on now and um I carried a lot of guilt because I thought I was doing uh, what was best for my my baby and um I punished myself then uh, even though it was out of my hands um and it wasn't my responsibility um there was nothing that I could have really done I was actually doing the best thing for her at the time but um it was just unfortunate and um now I'm doing everything I can to support her just as I was doing before um but in those dark times and you're carrying all those that guilt and you're carrying all that self-love loving um it can be isolating um and I feel that not only can Happy Hearts House create a platform for the kids, but it can also make parents feel less alone in those tough times um, of trauma, of stress. Um, because Just because we're spiritual people doesn't mean that we don't feel these things. Uh, in fact, we probably feel more feelings now than we did before because we let ourselves feel, uh, we acknowledge those feelings, and then we keep growing and moving on but having that support network is and that connection is important to that growth and that that constant movement forward um I mean like one thing that I think works for me was definitely meditation which is why I wanted to come and have this uh discussion with you Mason because um you're so really good at it I mean what does it feel like 
to be able to do that for people like what you do right well I just want to just go a little bit backwards and then I can I can answer more on what that feels like but I just want Mm -hmm. to comment on what happy hearts house is going to do in this age of like humans are social beings and Mm -hmm. we we need this connection and I think that whether it's like joining a book club joining a gym or joining an online community like these are all great ways of developing connections Mm -hmm. and if we can develop communities that are dedicated to spreading like heart-centered awareness it I think that's going to lead ourselves into meditation and going off of that I think meditation is sometimes I see it as it's creating like this this thrust like behind our hearts like when we when we tap in and we meditate we're we're building momentum Mm -hmm. and if we're building momentum with the focus on getting to our heart space I just as like the random acts of kindness I I can't picture that going unnoticed yeah I think that it's going to spread further and further and it'll help us all to live more authentically and just knowing that I myself had that experience watching other people guide meditations on YouTube or any other online source is what called me to be able to be another beacon for that experience for other people and I've recently stepped into this role and it it feels much more powerful than I would have expected it I don't feel like I have like a heavy weight on my shoulders, Mm -hmm. but I do feel that there's, there's potential behind what I'm doing. And if I can do what I want to do, which is teach guided meditations from a space of flowing out of my heart, I think I'm going to eventually reach many people. And my goal through, through that is to guide those people that do find me back to their heart because step by step i i think that's how we're all going to heal so it feels feels very powerful but also very empowering and it makes me want to step further into this new being that i'm creating this new being of light you're making me smile so much (laughs) i'm just just listening to you but it's it's you are you're already doing it you know you you're already you, you're so capable of it um and even just like sitting and listening to you now it's just you you were already put like well me maybe people listening can relate um into that state of calm um, you just have that essence about you and it's it's utterly magical and um it's actually it just shows that you you're so divine um and it's people like you that have made me have um like a new sense of uh trust in people in humanity so um, I'm I'm very grateful for the divinity in you, um, and I'm hoping that um, I'm not the only one that sees it. I can't be the only one that sees it. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm just uh, I'm excited to see how you grow, Mason, uh, and I'm hoping that um, we can definitely do some collaborations for uh, the future of Happy Hearts House. Um, I'm sure our listeners will be really excited for that. Um, I look forward to taking part in plenty more of your meditations. Um, as And I'll even uh, get our Ava involved as well <laughs> in that. Um, but um, for anybody listening who does want to connect with um, Mason, 
um, and his meditations. He does have a YouTube channel channel that um, I've linked down below um, in the description. Um, also a website. Um, his name is Cosmic Landings on all social media networks. Um, I'm sure that Mason can tell you a little bit more about his social media handles. <laughs> Yes, please, anyone that is looking to further connect with me, please reach out via Instagram, um, my YouTube, or even direct messaging through any of my social medias. I would love to connect with all of you and help you along your journey. I do have some projects in the works, so if you do want to follow me on social media, there will be some big releases coming soon. So I hope that you can all get connected and that we can keep spreading this love together oh i'm so excited for that mason so looking forward to that (laughs) so guys i'm so happy that you could all join us and mason that you could have joined us here today for this discussion it's been very enlightening and i feel so happy leaving it there um i think that We'll definitely have to reconnect soon. Um, I look forward to everything that you have in the pipelines. Um, I'll just say again and encourage you all to follow Mason Cosmic Landings on all social media networks. And until next time, live with love. Thank you so much for having me. It feels like such an honor to be a part of this growing happy hearts house so thank you again for this opportunity and thank you all to those that are listening i'm becca and i've been your host today on happy hearts podcast thank you so much for tuning in i'll catch you next time until then live with love